This episode of Cigars and Sea Stories, Bennett and Mike are talking about the motor pool. The motor pool. See, I like. I spent a lot of time at the motor pool because I was in a cat team, combined anti armor team, and we rolled around in gun trucks with high backs, and it, it was a good time, man. You can't truck it, fuck it. But there was a lot of stuff that we needed to pay attention to and maintain. We always had to go and pee on the trucks, and we always had to bust tires. Uh, and then when we got in country, we changed a lot of the armor that we had on the truck. We changed a lot of the, you know, like the bulletproof glass on the front and stuff like that. Um, got a yeah. lot of fucked up stories about the motor pool. So, yeah, man. How about you? I never had to do any of that shit. I mean, <laughs> no, no, I don't mean that completely. I All right. So so here's here's my thing. And this is my ex- this is some of my experience with the motor pool. So I was in reconnaissance in the Marine Corps, obviously, uh, and this was in the '90s. So it wasn't. It was before the days when we were really, really in the desert. Uh, except for it was after Desert Storm, but you know we weren't like rolling around in the desert. We were still f- rolling around in the you know f- f- woods of North Carolina and. Some other places like that. So at, as recon at that time, we didn't really use vehicles. Uh, it just didn't happen. Um, now, I not, needless to say, I went and got my home V license. Uh, <laughs> um, what a, what <laughs> not, a great not, accomplishment. Yeah, not, not necessarily, you know, it was just so I was able to drive home Vs. Um, but honestly, after I... <laughs> After I went through the, 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 I don't remember how many days I remember trying to get home V stuck though. And that shit was fun as freaking hell. hell. Yes. So that hell was, you yes. know, driving around Camp Lejeune, trying to get shit stuck was awesome. And, you know, winching yourself out and then going to the next spot and winching yourself out and doing the fording out on the beach and doing fording, you know, in the rivers and all that type of stuff. That was badass, Right. I loved it. But uh, after that in the core, I, I really don't remember driving a Humvee. I, and I really don't, you know, shit, man. I, to be honest, I'm, I, we, I know we had a motor pool out, no. at, out at the beach, but yeah. it, not really. Yeah. I mean, and it might have happened once or twice when I ran out to, uh, <sighs> You know, like we had to like move some boats or something and we had like a boat trailer that we had to pull around. Maybe, maybe. Uh, but I, I wasn't that guy. I just don't. I mean, I remember doing PMs and stuff, but every like <laughs> once in a blue moon, bro. It wasn't like weekly PMs. You know what I mean? But then uh, so the biggest thing that I time that I ever had to deal with vehicles was when I was deployed to Bosnia in the army because I was a driver. Um, yeah. and I drove for our, I was the platoon, the platoon commander's driver. So we, uh, the one truck, whatever truck you want to call it, you ESD, know? Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I played those games, but in the army and over there, at least in that mission, like we didn't bust down tires and we didn't do that shit. Uh, I didn't change out anything. All I did was PM, make sure my vehicles was my vehicle was straight, put gas in it, put oil in it, and just do the minor maintenance, you know, the small scale maintenance. Otherwise, the motor pool guys did that, or Lockheed Martin. Yeah, had See, the contract, had the maintenance contract. That was it. We would work with Motor T on, so we would work with Motor T stateside to learn how to do everything on the fuselage of the truck. If it had to do with the motor or tranny or the pumpkin in the back or anything else, they had to do it. Well, of course we could change the fluid out of the pumpkin. We could change all of the fluid out of everywhere on the truck. Um, all the tires, everything else we could bust tires ourselves as sort of like when you take a come along strap, you know, those run flat donuts that are inside. And I'm not saying that I never did it. 
I'm yeah. just saying that I did it like once and that's it. Like that it was, was it? never like oh it was God, never dude. a it's like, yeah, in theory I knew how to do it, but would it be like, yeah, in theory I know how to make chicken cordon bleu. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I would have to look up the I would have to open the manual and look at how to do it. Like yeah, I've done it and I've been shown, but I'm not going to be like, okay, I'm not teaching a freaking period of instruction on it. You know what I'm saying? Um, Other than now driving the motherfuckers and all that shit, hell's to the yes. I go off on those fucking vehicles and I've got tons of hours because I also went to five ton school too. Yeah. So I did drive one of those around Bosnia. Let me tell you, that ain't fucking easy. No. Considering how small those roads are. Uh, and then I also drove buses, which was totally another weird story. But anyway, uh, I got licensed to drive those bluebird buses. Oh my God. Yes. Never, never had to drive one. Like, but I was, they had a motherfucker license to do it, you know? Um, but anyway, yeah. Driving five tons is a lot of fun too. Holy shit. See, I've driven an MRAP, which MRAPs are the size of the seven tons. Right. Basically, you need a seven ton license if you're going to drive an MRAP. Yeah. And they right. were like, you're in country. So I say, really I say five ton because five tons kind of like that blanket. It's a big ass fucking truck. You know, right. when you throw that bitch in the six by it's on. Right. Let's fucking go. Oh, yeah. This Which doesn't happens. happen very often, but it, it it did in school. And it was awesome. So that's like hard to get those fucking things stuck, bro. I'm sure. I mean, I know it can be done, but damn. Yeah, you can go through some shit. Well, and what I really like about all of the larger trucks is some people don't like this. I mean, it's not necessarily the same independent suspension. It's you have a big ass hoss of a truck with a V shaped hull. You know, it's like ramming speed. Um, there, it's awesome uh, watching the enemy cease fire when a seven ton rolls up. And what I think so funny about it is. We peel out of the back of like seven tons and stuff, which anybody who's ever been in an armored one, you're sitting with your backs to one another in the center. And then there's armor that goes around you and ways to get out of the vehicle. I'll put it to you that way. Um, I've seen guys just jump right out of that motherfucker. Just like the ramp goes down out the back and instead of stair stepping down, they're like, they might hit one stair on the way down and just flood out the back of this thing. You know, it's this giant V shaped armor rolling up in front of a house or something. It's terrifying. It's fucking terrifying. I'm on their side and it's terrifying. It's badass. Right. Absolutely. (laughs) See, but like when these, when we got hit by IEDs, dude, we had to change our own tires out in zone if we could, or if we had to call for a wrecker, QRF would come out with the wrecker. Dude, you're talking about a motor team Marine who, this guy is not outside the wire all the fucking time. I'm going to tell you right now, but he's got enough balls to drive a wrecking truck out onto the X. We couldn't move the vehicle. It's down hard. So now you know that there's going to be a secondary IED threat. That guy doesn't know. He probably doesn't know. We know that there's probably going to be a secondary IED threat. And I only say it that way because, well, training is training. We've been operating outside the wire longer than he has. So he just kind of dum to dum Like more often than not, our motor T guys would just like haul ass out there, throw, throw the link around whatever the truck is, you know, in any way that they could drag the thing away and then just hook and go. And just all the way back down. I mean, there are numerous times where there were just sparks flying behind these just trucks that were just being dragged down Route Michigan. Oh, man. And if we got blown up and we could help them fix it, then we would help them fix it. We would replace windshields and shit like that. Well, you were okay. So you were on PSD, right? Like you were the you were the PSD driver or whatever. Yes. Okay. So funny story about that so i will tell a story i will tell a c story i may have told before but i'm going to tell it again uh once you're done so go ahead well yeah so three seven psd this is 2005 we're in hermati i want to say it was november time frame and i was with cat red at the time we were on qrf 
responded out. PSD had gotten blown up. Uh, the gunner had been hit. He was he was medevaced. And we needed to pick up the vehicle, which was down hard, bring it back over to Motor T. And then if we could fix the vehicle, put it back into our rotation. So it was like, if we could fix the vehicle, we could have it. Kind of a thing. So there, <laughs> there's our value proposition. Like, all right, Penny, go help him fix that vehicle. Right? And I was there. Yeah. And helping. fucking Marines, they need that shit. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> like, we're going to part this fucking thing out. You have no idea how valuable that vehicle right, to us right, was. Right, exactly. That was, you can't go and slay the enemy without a vehicle because our crew serve is on top of it. So which one is the weapon? I get it. The gun is on top. But the vehicle has to put you into position to use the fucking gun. Otherwise, it's useless. Together combined, it's a weapon. That's the way that we look at it. Right? And it's got all of our ammo and all of our rockets and all of our other shit that's in there, let alone our chow and our water. And God damn it, we needed a vehicle. So I go over there. And we were, I was lead truck driver. So I saw the scene and everything else. Like, we helped pull this thing out. I knew that it was blown the fuck up. I knew that somebody had been pulled out of it. So we open up the doors, motor T's over there. They're like, whoa. And I'm like, yeah, dude, like uh, that somebody got hit. So there's blood and there's 762 link and brass and all sorts of shit. And anybody who's ever looked inside of a, a gun truck afterwards, usually you've got the gunner strap and you've got a piece of string, a 550 cord that loops down into the gun. And that's what you pull to go up and down on the buttstock or on the spades of, of whatever the crew surf is up top. And so just out of habit, I pulled that string to see if the, uh, the gun was off its T and E to see if it was broken off of its mount. And I just always pull all of that stuff. I pulled it and a hand falls. The guy's hand was still attached to the gun up top Fuck you. and just lands like on the, on the gunners, you know, stand, you know, it's got that square stand. Yeah, right. Shit. Oh my God. And the motor T guy is like, ho, 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 ho. And I'm like, dude, can you get me uh, a Ziploc bag? And he's like, what the fuck are you, there's, they're not going to be able to attach that. And I'm like, well, I got to take it over to BAS. Like I have to kind of a deal. And this guy's like, wow, why don't you just call the docs and they'll come over and do this shit. And I'm like, because that dude needs his wedding ring back. Like that was my thought process. It was his left hand. And so gentler, Michael Penny. Right. right. I was like, he needs his wedding ring. Uh, I don't know, man. We, we we bagged this dude's hand and walked it over to the battalion aid station and was like, um, I still, I have no idea who that, I don't know their name. I, I was just like, here, we, we responded on QRF and I was tearing into the truck and this, um, was in it. And the doc is looking at me. He was, oh dude, I'll never forget this. He, <laughs> He's this tall, lanky, black corpsman who's leaned up against one of the sandbag walls that's in front of BAS. And he is smoking. <laughs> he's smoking like a Newport 100. And he looks over at this Marine holding a bag like I'm covered in dust and in, in, in my camis. I've got my rifle and a bag with like blood in it, essentially. And he's like, man, what the fuck do you got there? And I hold it up and tell him what's going on. And he's, whoa, mother, holy shit. All right, we're going to take that into the MO. And, uh, dude, he was just not expecting that shit. That dude was on his Yeah, because why would break. you? Home you know what I like mean? Taking a break and you're freaking walking up with the right. dude's hand. Right. Dude, or, or what's left of his hand. He was only with the unit for like, probably a month or two after we got back, but that mm. was his story. He was like, dude, this motherfucker came up whenever I went through and got Hands like, me shot. a Ziploc bag. <laughs> You're the motherfucker. Hand me a hand. I handed you a hand. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, uh, Jesus, all right. <clears throat> yeah, that was a motor T experience. 
me tell my fucking vehicle, one of the vehicle stories, but it's a pretty good one of just complete fucking, just like, yep, okay, I'm going to die. Um, and no one's coming with me. So, <laughs> so we're on, we, this is in Bosnia and again, I was the lead truck driver. So we are driving, we are on QRF at this point, running out of camp, uh, out of Eagle base in Tuzla. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, and we had down, we were down there on a rotation to run QRF for a month. And so we got called out. I can't remember if it was one of our like sister units that it was doing an ammo, uh, an ammo count on one of the Serbian positions because you had a, the different factions. So they were doing like a Serbian army, whatever the hell it was, some kind of count. And there was a discrepancy, right, in mm -hmm. the in in the count and the the commander started the commander the serbian commander started getting squirrely so they called qrf out too to just kind of like back these guys up right right in case shit decided to go down so we're like scooting man and we're trying to get there as fast as we can right but it's it's a it's probably an hour drive because it's not on improved roads really uh and literally riding on this goat trail, man. I mean, it's a fucking goat trail. There's no other way to describe it. And Humvees are not the smallest vehicles. I mean, they're Dear fucking God, wide. Man. Yes. They're wide as shit, right? And 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 these are up armored Humvees. So at this point, we already had up armored Humvees in Bosnia. Right. And they're heavy, they heavy motherfuckers. Yeah, because why would you have that shit in Iraq, right? right. Why, why Why would I bolt on Matt? Because Kitts? why would well, I do because, that? Because because you're in the Marine Corps. It was only and, a, uh, yeah. Yeah. And the army has whatever the fuck they want. So let's be honest. So um we're on this trail. All of a sudden, man, the trail just starts getting narrower. And there's this rock wall on the right hand side. So I have a right limit that I can't go through. You know what I mean? Right. It's not even like I can put two wall, two wheels on like the side of this hill. But this hill that we're driving, this goat trail is on. This hill is like the kind, like if you were to turn and go down it, you're fucking dying. Right. It's a, it's a, it's, <laughs> it's not a, it's not a cliff per se, but it's a, it's a grassy hill. But it's at like a 45 degree angle, man. Right. Like they're like at least like a 30 degree. Yeah, it's it's you ain't stopping that Humvee if it decides to go down that hill. Right. So you're either going down and you're hanging on and whatever you smash into because you're not breaking or you're rolling down sideways. You know what I mean? And flipping and, you know, side over side. If this freaking line of four Humvees decides that the road breaks loose. Well, lo and behold, that's what fucking starts to happen. The left side of this fucking goat trail starts crumbling. And my whole vehicle no. lurches to the left. No, that's sketchy. Like, like, like left, that's like the fucking wheels sketchy. On the left, like, basically, they fall off the road, right? And I'm, like, perched on the side of this freaking hill, bro. Mm-mm. And I look at everybody and I go, I'm, I can't move, man. That's it. Back everybody out because I'm stuck. I'm, I'm not going forward any farther. It's just not going to happen. It's too dangerous. Right. Right. So at that point, again, as soon as I say that, I, the LT calls out over the radio, I'll stop, you know, everyone back out because we're not going this way. We've got to go out and around, which is an even longer way, blah, blah, blah. And this had been after like a rain and whatnot. So it was just the road was sucky. But there's me stuck in the sucking spot, right? So because all of a sudden, then the vehicle lurches again to the left. And you hear the gunner go, oh, fuck no. <laughs> he bails. He fucking bails out of the vehicle. <laughs> and as soon as he does it, everyone else bails out of the vehicle, including the lieutenant. Oh, my God, dude. I would have been gone, too. I'm just saying. Uh, well, dude, I couldn't. If I got out, I was falling. Right. So the only other option I had was either I'm going down with the ship 
or I'm going to like park this bitch and get out. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> um, but they're like, don't you dare fucking let that vehicle go. You know, like you're signed for it. Motherfucker. <laughs> It's your name on that trip ticket, bitch. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh no, like seriously, seriously, Sergeant, you're gonna fucking. It's like my because I think my platoon sergeant was there too. He was giving then then it just turned into a joke where everybody's fucking with me. But the funniest part was my gunner just fucking bailing on Jesus bails out the top end. He's like, fuck it, I'm out. Oh my god. And then everyone else in the vehicle, all of a sudden, I turn and they're gone. It's like you heard some sh- some shuffling, and all of a sudden, the fucking vehicle's empty. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck? Yep. I was like, fuck all y'all. <laughs> and, then, and then the best part about it was I lit a cigarette. Hell yes. You want to bail on me? I'm lighting a fucking cigarette. Fucking fuck A. You. I'm out. <laughs> I can lit that bitch and smoked it. Damn straight. Are you, you smoking did. in that fucking vehicle? Yes, I am. <laughs> Do you I'm see gonna... this precarious I... situation I'm in? See, that was funny. But then we ended up just hooking up to one of the other vehicles and we were able to pull it out um, and not tumble down the hill. So it all worked out. But... Oh, dear God. Asshole pucker. A lot. Oh, yes. So, yeah, yeah. that's my freaking one of the one of my. Have you ever taken back a truck and you're just like, I didn't mean to do it? And I, yes, yes, it I, was. I, it's, think I, I had like a, a mirror strike on it. Yes, and I think I ended up that like both mirrors were gone, and the whole the not just the mirrors, but the whole like you know the plat the all the fixings and the work that or all the all the pipes and shit that hold the mirror up right gone it's gone right. like gone done that oh yeah. yeah oh fuck it did that busted the shit out of the front like brush guard i just yes. oh dude we cut a corner so we we pulled in to the souk into these like you know the souk is a marketplace and it's got all the roll up doors uh, and all of their awnings basically fold smooth against the side of the building. And so you've got these real tight alleyways and they narrow it right down. I and mean, it's like Alice in Wonderland type shit when you start driving through in a Humvee and all of a sudden you're just like, oh shit, you know, and you're just, you're stuck. I mean, literally if something happened right now, you couldn't open any of the doors. I mean, everybody's going to have to try to go out through the gunner's hatch or out yeah, through the back fucking coffin. Right. So the gunner, you know, Willie's like, back it up, back it up, back it up. And he's, he's of course, overhead, you've got power lines, just string power lines sort of going back and forth. So you, you've got to keep the gun out of the way also and try to navigate how you're going to back the truck up and turn because now you've got to go another route. And so as I'm coming back out, I kind of, turn to the right just a little too much and the front left of the brush guard catches and just goes like and just the whole front left just wham 90 degree angle and fuck just like penny you're paying for that no i'm not what the fuck are you talking about fuck i am <laughs> right fuck you i'm an e3 operational I'm fucking shit. operational fucking right shit <laughs> right I'm on mission, bitch. <laughs> right. Fuck all that. I've had a transmission drop out. Um, I've had the tires shot out from underneath me before. Just IEDs. All sorts of different shit blowing up the truck before. Um, I Yeah. Just every once in a while, you fuck a truck up. Like one time, we had to grab something out of the back. You know how the back hatch on a Humvee has two different latches? Yeah. Right. You've got like the one that's down by the tailgate and then you've got the one that's up by the gunner. Yeah. And a lot of people don't use that other one. But occasionally gunners do so they can just rip off the back. And frankly, it's like a quick release. Also, if you really wanted to use it that way. Well, anyway, I tried to open in the back hatch and the fucker was stuck. And SOP when the back hatch is stuck is that you have 
your gunner stand, you know how like on either side, you basically have a foot and a half of room on either side of the deck lid. And so what the gunner is supposed to do is stomp right above the hatch and then you push open. Well, Willie stomped like in the middle of it. Dude, keep in mind, we're on the middle of fucking nowhere. Well, not the middle of nowhere. We're in the middle of the city, but we're in the middle of like everything. You know, we didn't hide down an alleyway. We're sitting out on Route Michigan. This is like a four-lane road, too, going either side with a median. And I've got to get into the back hatch, I think, to pull out flares or some shit like that. It was like as per SOP. Well, he's jumping on this thing, and I go to pop the latch, and the whole fucking deck lid comes off and lands on me. Like, it goes up all this one huge piece and then slams into my chest and floors me. I'm like laying in the fucking street. (laughs) <laughs> I guess supposedly Vic 2 and 3 both saw it and they were laughing hysterically Willie was laughing at me he was like yeah the other truck guys are laughing at you and uh, get up and try to put this thing back together slamming it doing whatever Willie's like jumping on the thing on the back finally we break it to where it just stays shut and uh, and I'll, uh, yeah LT and my section leader come running back out of OPVA, which at the time was something different. We were trying to like turn it into a bank or something. They come running back over to the truck and they're like, what the fuck? What the fuck did you do to our truck? Like we leave. It looks beautiful. We, you know, we come back and this thing is fucking mangled on the back. This is why we can't have nice things. You know, this is why you can't have nice things. (laughs) We get it back to motor T motor T's like, Oh yeah, no problem. Clack. Pink. Where the fuck were you guys when we were out on patrol, you sons of bitches? God damn it. You know, and it's either that or you show up in and the staff sergeant is working there is like, you fucking idiots. Like, you guys are dumb. You're really dumb. They say that we're dumb. You guys are dumb. And and it usually starts like that. And then he fixes it within five seconds. But what I now, love, <laughs> what I love speaking- is just watching them. So. Speaking about, it's not motor pools, but it's mode of transportation in the Marine Corps. I've got a good story. I'm not going to tell it now, um, but I'll just prime everyone. It's a pretty good story about bringing a boat back uh, all fucking fucked up. <laughs> literally, of uh, of uh, a Zodiac boat where literally I had a Marine on either side with a foot pump plugged into the freaking side of the boat just pumping with all their freaking hearts jumping on top of these freaking foot pumps just to keep the thing from fucking sinking. So, Oh dear God. Yeah, just, from losing, just from losing air. So that's a good, that's a good story, but I'm not going to tell it now. That's That'll be motor T. So it's motor T, but not really motor T. <laughs> and that right there is why you subscribe, rate and review the podcast. Do it time. Now go ahead, join the newsletter, be a part of the conversation. Sign up for some of that bonus content. Check out Heroes Media Group. They're a veteran-focused podcast network. We are a proud member of it. And uh, we're going to keep sharing sea stories. I mean, Bennett did way more boat stuff than I did. I I never did any. I never did any boat stuff. Yeah, man, I freaking did. I mean, and then the last few months that I was actually in recon, I worked at the boat locker. So I used to just shit. We'd take boats out for lunch and just mm. fuck shit up. It was a lot of fun. I'm picturing you in those in those brown chonies. Yeah, baby, the UDT shorts. Just What's out, up? Mm. Rocking What's boots, up? boots and yeah. the UDTs. Oh yeah, that's right. It was fucking awesome. Green jungles, Ultimus. Just saying. Baller. There you go, folks. Thank you for listening to another episode of Cigars and Sea Stories. You can follow us across social media at Cigars and Sea. Again, that's at Cigars and Sea. Huge thank you to our sponsors, Heroes Media Group, VeteransList.us, Spartan Media, and so many more. We will uh, definitely uh, uh, be talking to you about boats on the next go-around. So please subscribe, rate, review the podcast, and, you know, stick around. Be part of the conversation. Be chatting. I'm sure that you have some Motor T comments of your own. Do so on the comment section of this episode. Uh, I have no idea what that URL is going to be, but you can see it on cigarsandcseries.com on the podcast page. And uh, per this episode, 
so that you can uh, leave your comments on there. We like seeing them on the website so that we can engage on there, enjoy the community, take it off. You know, it's cool talking on social media and messaging back and forth and stuff like that, but we have a website for a reason. Anyway, we love you guys. You're awesome. Keep listening. Benny, you got anything for these people? Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> it's every time. You know, sometimes we you need to give Bennett's words. Every away. once in a while, but I'm just priming the, the audience, so right. I got nothing. That's right. That's, there you go. That's why they got a subscribe rate and review time now. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Cigars and Sea Stories. And on that note, we cue the music. Music.